before I even got to um, America, I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think it was going to come to us at all. And then as it started getting more and more, it started worrying me more and more. Me and my friends were like, oh, it's never going to come up here. Nah. And then it started getting serious. And I was like, okay, this is happening. I need to be prepared for it. A lot of people thought, you know, all the news about it was just like overreacting. Nobody really cared until up until we had to leave. We were getting ready to change into our costumes for our next scene for the musical. One of us went onto our phones and saw something about coronavirus and we saw that a school by us had to cancel their musical and I just remember thinking like, oh my gosh, like are we going to have to cancel our show? It was pretty scary because I mean there was a lot of rumors going around for a couple of weeks amongst like teachers and the faculty. They would be telling us what they knew and what they didn't know. And eventually the rumor was we were all getting shut down. It really hit me hard when it kind of all fell apart. I didn't know what to do. They didn't really think it would be anything like this. We had our senior trip planned and we had that booked. I actually sat them down and prepared them like, you know, you guys should really look look at this and we might have to cancel our trip. They were just in disbelief. We were going to go down to Clearwater, Florida and spend spring break there. I was like, all right, there goes our senior trip. So that was, that was really hard. We raised like upwards of uh, $15,000 throughout our four years. We was trying to figure out some way of uh, giving back to the students because four years is a lot of time. I was very fortunate to be able to do my musical before this whole thing happened. It was literally just days before the school closed. We missed out on the Olympics of the Visual Arts competition, which was like a really big deal because we've been working on it all year long. So like since the beginning of the year. Baseball, absolutely loved the sport, but it was a shame we couldn't play this year. Margaretville always did a senior slideshow. It would show each person's picture, like what their plans are for the fall, their senior quote, all that fun stuff. And then the seniors would hand down the juniors their senior shirts and we don't we can't do that and that kind of makes me sad too i mean obviously i think the biggest thing for me that i'm gonna miss out on is that classic graduation where all my friends and family can be there and watch us just walk up there give our speeches talk hug and throw our caps in the air every graduating class before us and everyone graduating after us will get to experience the best part of their senior year with their friends as normal students would, except for us. We are the only class that will be affected this harshly by it. I think I was home when I found out that the school would be closing. And uh, I didn't really know how to feel, kind of mixed. I got so upset because four weeks just sounded like a lot because school is like my life. I love school. I love everybody there. So knowing that I couldn't be there for four weeks sounded literally like a nightmare. At the time, thinking it was only four weeks, I was actually kind of excited. I was like, oh, it's like a little vacation. You know, I, I wasn't thinking that it would be something as big as it has become. March 12th, that's when they actually closed school. And I was like, wow, like they just closed school. This is, this is happening. This is real. We came in on a Monday and we got all of our stuff out of our lockers and we got all of our school supplies that we needed. But I never knew it was going to last for this long. It was really put together in a hurry because it was an emergency and everything was just put online. And we all really had to adjust to learning online and figuring out how to really learn and develop our abilities on the internet rather than in a classroom environment, which was, it was tough at first, but I, mean, I think everybody got the hang of it. They went through Irene, so they know what that disaster was about. And now this is a totally different kind of disaster to deal with. And thank goodness for modern technology, because honestly, um, I'm not sure how we would have done this had we not had Zoom and, and Google Classroom and all of those things. Switching completely at home was a challenge in some ways, but I was definitely concerned for my grades at first that if I'll stay good or not, or if this is going to affect my performance. Some classes we would have like class meetings, and then other classes they'll post like instructional videos. Our teachers are doing really great with the online stuff. 
at BOCES. I had online courses for culinary in my classes that I took at Margaretville, and I uh, had a pretty steady supply of work. We use things like Google Classroom and Google Docs for any typing and stuff like that. Some of the other courses, they've decided to do pass-fail because you're basically teaching yourself with a little help indirectly also. Kids who don't have internet, they send paperwork home either via bus or they pick up at the school every Monday. Some students have been getting boxes of food, which is really great that our school is able to do that for them. I just try and take what I can and make it the best. So that's what I kind of did. I just thought, well, this gives me an opportunity to learn in a different way. So if this ever happened again in college, like when I go to college, I know I've already gone through it. So I know how to go through it again. My average for school has gone up. I wasn't expecting it to go that well. So school-wise, it's been going well, but it's just not the same. It's just sad. I do get more me time, which I didn't really get much before. So like if I'm not working that day and I get a day off, I'm like thanking everybody <laughs> for it. But Well, with a quarantine, everyone's been locked in their houses, so we kind of have to be relying on themselves for entertainment. I love cooking. <laughs> I love cooking and baking, and so that's something I've been doing a little more often during this quarantine. My friends and I, we like have a group chat, so we all talk, we FaceTime. At first, we weren't allowed to hang out. As time went on, we were all quarantined, so we figured, oh... We can hang out outside. We met up at the school in our cars and stayed six feet apart, which was really cute and nice to see each other finally. We started coming up with ideas and texting each other, and we actually went on like a social distancing hike. We did like an 11 mile hike where we all tried to stay six feet away, which we did. It all worked out. We were all safe. And it was hard not being able to leave my house as much as I usually do. I actually got mandatory quarantine by the health department because I was exposed to the virus. So I know firsthand what it was like to actually be isolated and not be allowed to leave. I was locked in my room for, I want to say 10 days. And that was, that was, it got tough after a while. I'll tell you that. middle school I went to a large middle school in Buffalo where you had to try out for everything including certain classes. I know a lot of people that have gone to Margaretville their whole life they're like there's no opportunity here but I feel like there's more opportunity here because the auditions aren't to figure out if you're in or out it's to figure out where you're going to be. If you want to be a part of something you're automatically a part of it. The audition is just to figure out where you would fit best. For the most part, you know, people do get along. I mean, whatever drama happens, usually that just blows over like in a few days. Margaretville's a pretty great school. I mean, it's a smaller school, but we're a real tight-knit community, like family. Everybody gets along real well, and my class is pretty great, and we're good students. Um, we're all really great friends. We always hang out with each other and do stuff on the weekends. There is still that stupid school drama, but it's a really good school and it's like a family. Our class is probably the least dramatic class that I've seen so far at Margaretville. <laughs> We're very, very rambunctious, I would have to say. Going up through middle school and elementary, our class was the quote unquote class to watch out for. I think you're gonna see this group go places. If they can make it all work after COVID and being quarantined for the last nine, 10 weeks, I think they can, you know, I think they can do whatever they want. I really do. I think if they put their mind to it, I think this group of kids can do whatever they want. Oh gosh. <laughs> they are going to make a huge mark on the world. They are very creative go-getters. They're always doing something. They're always going somewhere, working. I think they're going to make a huge mark on the world. Don't 
the Mark Project was kind enough to create all these beautiful signs for us. And so we decided to distribute everything. So the signs are a surprise today for the kids. They don't know they're getting these and they're expecting just their caps and gowns. And we invited the community to take part in the parade. So it's going to be a delivery and then we're going to drive around with the fire department and the school buses and everybody's decorated cars. I think the students will be very happy with this. Uh, they've gone through so much with having so little these last three and a half months and I think this will be a, a nice way of topping off the year and giving them something to look forward to as well as planning for graduation in two weeks. So this will be well received, I hope. Congratulations, class of 2020. We're going to miss you. Thank you. Come behind me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. teachers here are like dedicated to the school. They've been with the school for so long that they've taught our parents. They're all like really helpful and they're all being really considerate through all of this about all the work and everything that's being done. And even though I've like been slacking for since we like ended, like they're all reaching out to me to make sure I'm okay and stuff like that. So I'm really appreciative to all of them. And they take the little kindergartners and pre-Kers and they walk them around the upstairs and I'll just be sitting in class sometimes and I'll see them yell my name and I'll, I'll see him wave to me but it's, it's pretty cool because everybody gets to know you it's cool to be able to be a role model everybody knows each other on a much more personal basis like your gym teacher could be your next door neighbor or your math teacher could be your uncle or your aunt it makes it a lot easier learning and developing skills and stuff at the school so that's pretty good marvel it's home it feels so nice driving through town even it's such a cute little place to be in and you go to the store you see people you know everyone's always helping everyone out it's just it's a really good place to grow up I've kind of learned 
to take things in the moment because you don't know what's going to happen next and you don't know when things are going to be taken or if they're going to be taken. So just go and have fun and make memories pretty much is what I've learned. It's really important to challenge yourself and just think about what you can gain in the future by putting your mind to different things that you wouldn't normally consider, whether it's because you're not passionate about it or because you're afraid of it. If you have a drama club in your school, I would definitely look into trying it at least once. The drama club at my school changed my life forever. Well, I, I feel like there is like a lesson in all of this that like, it's important to really value the time that you have doing something because you never know if it can be cut short. I don't know, I feel like that, that's like an important lesson that can be kind of gleaned from all of this. I think it helped me grow, like in the sense of online learning, that's really getting me used to the college experience. A lot of stuff is online, seminars online, classes are online, there's homework assignments all online, so it, it's helping me with that. I'll be more ready for that, so I mean, that, that was a positive that came out of the virus. I don't know, I, I, there's not a lot of good that I can think of only because of how hard it hit me personally. Like, it was really hard for me, so. Just trying to think of some good things, it's really hard. <laughs> but I think once we get into the future more and people ask, oh, when did you graduate? I graduated in 2020. Then it will be this long conversation that not everyone else will have because when we say that that was our senior year and that's what we had to go through, it'll just make the conversation longer. <laughs>
I wasn't really sure if I liked it or not. We went to an aquarium, which I've been to so many before, but this one just, I don't know, just hit me differently. <laughs> There's so many different things I guess you could do, but I haven't looked into it. I want to go to SUNY Delhi for psychology. Well, I wanted to be close to home and I figured that's a good place to start. If I didn't like college and I, it's only a two-year college and I can figure it all out throughout that time and see what I really want to do, that would be a good idea to go there. I just want to say thank you to like all my teachers and all my friends and seniors that have like helped me through all of this and wish them luck in the future, I guess. <laughs> In the fall, I am planning on going to college. I'm currently stuck between two, Duchess Community College and Ulster Community College. Ulster, I was kind of like recruited to go into the soccer team, which is really cool. And so that's why I'm kind of pushing that way. And I'm going to go for business to get like my business and marketing degree. And then after I do that, then I'm going to eventually figure out what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I would love to be able to be like working in an office or I want to become a real estate agent and sell houses. I do like New York, but it's kind of cold and I really like the sun, so I may move down to South Carolina eventually in my future because I have family down there, but for right now I'm in New York. My focus was mathematics. I love math. It comes really easily to me. That's actually where I'm going to go to college for. I'm going to major in mathematics. I'm going to get my uh, teaching degree and I want to teach high school level math in the future. Right now, I'm currently attending Clemson. I'll be heading down south. I want to say in July, I believe, I'll be down there. I don't know whether or not classes will be online for the fall or not. They haven't said anything about it. So as of right now, I'll still be going on campus and learning, hopefully. I haven't thought too much about athletics in college. I want to focus on my education and getting my future set in line. When I get adjusted well, I'll try out for the teams. I'm going to college for uh, mechatronics, which is, it's a type of engineering and it's gonna be like a high paying field. I'm planning on making a lot of money. I'm gonna be attending uh, SUNY Delhi for, um, it's gonna be two years. I've been there like a lot of times before, so I kinda, I, I already know like what the place is like. I mean, obviously I don't know what college is gonna be like, but. At least I know the place that I'm going to. There was an open house uh, earlier this year uh, on on the campus, and we went there. They were like doing a whole bunch of like, demonstrations on all the different classes that they have there, and like I saw the mechatronics exhibit, and I just found it interesting, and I decided that's that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna be a transfer student from SUNY Delhi to SUNY Oneana. I'm gonna to go to Delhi for two years and I'm gonna major in early childhood education and then finish up in Oneana. I remember Oneana has always been like my goal because ever since I knew I wanted to teach, which has been a really long time, I've always heard that Oneana is such a good school, such a good school, and I looked into it more and they have like the best education program in New York State. So I was like, okay, I definitely have to get there eventually. I plan to attend uh, Vermont Tech, which is in Williston, uh, Vermont, right next to Burlington. I plan to go for their uh, professional pilot program up there. I'd gotten an offer to play basketball up there, a scholarship offer, but 
It's a little bit different than most colleges. The uh, athletics, like where all the athletics are held, are at a different campus than mine. I'm still at a quote unquote main campus, but um, the sports are held down like an hour away. So I'd have to drive an hour one way every day for practices and it just didn't work with my schedules. And there is intramural stuff that's right there at my campus too, which uh, I'm kind of looking forward to. I plan to uh, become a commercial airline pilot, hopefully within the realm of like maybe a year to a year and a half after being out of college, I could be at a regional airline or possibly even at like United flying form. So here we are, class of 2020, at the end of the strangest year ever. I've watched your class work through the changes and disappointments, and I've been reminded of one of my favorite stories about overcoming disappointment and struggling to succeed. My story is about the 1988 Jamaican bobsled team. In 1988, this group of men qualified for the Winter Olympics in spite of ridicule from the athletic world. The Jamaican bobsled team had five things that allowed them to qualify for the Olympics. They had talent, a work ethic, they had a collaborative mentality, a willingness to fail forward, and resilience. You know talent's important, but without a work ethic to develop it, and those other three characteristics to support it, you're not going to go very far. That said, these men were world-class sprinters. They picked a winter sport that they had no experience in and that required running ability to qualify. You graduates are much like that. You've all brought your diverse talents to the table. In many, it's academics, others athletics, music and art, some in just social pursuits. That said, without your talents and your work and passion, you wouldn't be here today. A powerful work ethic and ability to collaborate were the key essentials to the Jamaicans qualifying in 1988. They practiced in an area that had no snow. In fact, they never saw a bobsled, much less snow and ice, until they came to the United States. They worked together because they understood that the Olympics would not come to them. They had to go to the Olympics as prepared as those who had done this for a lifetime. You, the class of 2020, have shown many of these same characteristics. You had to adjust to a classroom structure that didn't exist. You had to keep your eyes on your goals in spite of being separated from your school, your teachers, your peers. You had to stay positive and work together to create the opportunity for a graduation ceremony that's worthy of your efforts. The last two characteristics have to do with a larger topic called growth mindset. The Jamaicans knew that they would fail. They were going to crash a lot. They knew that bobsledding was inherently more dangerous than sprinting. They allowed, this allowed them to see failure as a learning experience. Every time they failed, they learned something new. This allowed them to fail forward. They also persisted by rising up and trying again. This year, seniors has been a year of failing forwards. To your credit, you may have felt despair, but you didn't quit and lose hope. So here you are today with your many accomplishments, ready to face the future. Take with you, class of 2020, your talents, your work ethic, your ability to collaborate, your fail forwards, and your resilience. These will serve you in your lives. In closing, take the motto of the Jamaican bobsled team with you. Peace be the journey. Congratulations, graduates. Welcome graduates to the class of 2020. Uh, it is my honor to share with you several words uh, at your graduation and I look forward and hope that you will enjoy them. Uh, my words today come from a poem called The Four Candles. And four candles slowly burned. The ambiance was so soft one could almost hear them talking. The first candle said, I am peace. The world is full of anger and fighting. Nobody can keep it lit. Then the flame of peace went out completely. The second candle said, I am faith. I am no longer indispensable. 
it doesn't make sense that I stay lit anymore. Not another moment. Just then, a breeze slowly blew. Faith's flame. Sadly, the third candle began to speak and said, I am love. People don't understand my importance, so they put me aside. They even forget to love those who are nearest to them. And waiting no longer, love's flame went out. Suddenly, a child entered the room and saw the three unlit candles. Why aren't you burning? You're supposed to stay lit till the end. Saying this, the child began to cry. Then the fourth candle answered, Don't be afraid. I am hope. While I am still burning, we can relight the other candles. With shining eyes, the child took the candle of hope and lit the other candles. The greatest of these is love, but the flame of hope should never go out of your life. So graduates, as you graduate today and enter this new world, I wish you all to have faith and have love and peace because it is with all of these candles and their meanings that you will help make this world a better place. Congratulations to you, the class of 2020.